morning everyone welcome back to another reading vlog I'm doing quite a few these days <laughs> um, this reading vlog is gonna be all about who do you think you are which is a collection of short stories by Alice Munro and it was published in 1972 so this is also part of my 1970s project and I am buddy reading this with Tanya of the sampler girl um, these short stories are actually interconnected, so they're all about the same person. Rose is our protagonist, and they are set in the Depression era in small town Ontario, Canada. And well, they start in the Depression era and they move up through Rose's life as she comes to terms with her childhood and um, her stepmother and her upbringing in general. So um, it's interesting to me because this time period coincides with my um, favorite novel, The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence, except that Morag was growing up in Manitoba, small town Manitoba, and Rose is growing up in small town Ontario. So I think that the context and such is really interesting. So what I will say first about this is that I've read another collection of short stories by Alice Munro which were not quite as crude in terms of language and subject matter as these stories are. They are very crude and kind of surprised me that they were such. So it's interesting to me that Munro's style in here was much more direct and, um, you know, some rough language, some rough subject matter, compared to her work 10 years later in Moons of Jupiter, which was more, a little bit quieter, a little bit more introspective, more relationship about, like, adult relationships, and, um, I don't know, more pastoral, maybe, is a word that I could use in terms of their style. So, um, I'm enjoying it so far, but it, it definitely shook some of my expectations of what this book was supposed to be. It definitely um, shocked me a little bit that this was the style that the story was going to take, but um, I'm really intrigued also because I feel like, you know, your perceptions of an author based on the first book that you read by them um, should be challenged, and obviously Monroe has had many versions of herself and each piece of work is going to have its own style and ultimate um, essence and so I'm interested to read more and um, find out more about where she was going with these stories. There's a lot of great themes in here. <clears throat> um, more than I, I don't think I'll get into the themes at this stage. I think maybe um, I'll talk more about them in future, but um, on first, um, you know, read through on the first two sections, I would say that she's talking a lot about privilege in a kind of narrow scope, so not in the broad scope that we talk about privilege today, but in terms of class, in terms of access um, for um, lower middle class to working class families. She's talking about um, privilege in terms of birth, you know, being born into your family and having your mother die when you're born and then getting a stepmother and what that means for you in terms of your status in a family. And um, she's also talking about the kind of societal standards that um, men have versus women and sacrifice yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in here so I will talk again I'll check in um, every day I plan to read uh, a story per day I did yeah and then um, I'll give you my thoughts at the end so talk to you again soon hello everyone it's been ages since I've checked in it is Friday and I am working my way through 
Who Do You Think You Are by Alice Munro with the lovely Tanya from The Sampler Girl. And man, are we having a doozy of a buddy read with this. <laughs> it has so much that you can sink your teeth into. Uh, and I, I have so many, I'm really grateful that I'm reading it. Let's say that because I think that books like this that challenge the way you think and challenge your perceptions of how people should act in certain situations are good for you. And the fact that I've been yelling at this book and yelling at the characters in this book and uh, and having a funny discussions with Tanya about them on Voxer has made the enjoyment of it um, more. Uh, I've I have a lot of different thoughts about this book that are kind of all intertwined and mixed up, but I'm just going to talk about one or two of them right now, and then maybe I'll talk more at the end when I finish the novel or. The, I'm calling it a novel, but it's actually a, a series of short stories that are all about the same person. And I'm struggling with that as a structure, so let me start there uh, in, this, in this session. Um, I, I don't really understand why she didn't try to make this into more of a novel. It's hard because you're trying to take the short stories in and of themselves and think of them as individual pieces, but you are with the same character, so you are expecting character development to happen the way it would in a novel. And I think that's making me struggle with Rose's character. Rose is also the name of one of my dear friends that I love, and so it's hard that I don't really like the character in the book because I love my friend Rose um, but I don't have to like the characters in books in order to enjoy the books that's not a, nece a necessity for me so and I certainly don't um, like most of the characters I um, find most of them really hard to understand their motivations their their whole way of being is is a mystery. I'm trying to analyze the book in the sense of when it was written, um, how, you know, relationships between men and women at that period in time. Um, there's a lot about, it's a lot about poverty versus wealth, um, where that line is created so when you're poor when you grow up poor and then you have money and where those lines and, and and how that affects you as a person how your upbringing whether you have affluence or not makes you act as a person towards other people so all those themes really interesting um, the relationships between men and women in here are hard to accept in some cases for me and and I I know that's because these the the generation um, that this book is talking about is very different from my generation and so um, so a lot of themes a lot of interesting things happening so I'll say, yeah, the structure has been a challenge. I, I have to say, I've also read Moons of Jupiter by Alice Munro, and it's a lot easier to read short stories when they are not interconnected, in my opinion, because you just want it to be a novel, and you just want these to be chapters, and you just want some sort of growth to connect them and move through them in, in terms of the characters, and you just don't necessarily get that. So it's that part I'm finding a bit frustrating. And um, the themes of poverty and um, wealth, those themes are uh, probably the most obvious themes in the story. 
and I think they're the most successful thus far in terms of giving you a view into the lives of people and how your perception of the amount of money you have and how that cl classifies you in society is played out as you grow up. And I will talk more about more themes in this book probably near the end. I am over halfway, uh, so I should be finishing this book this weekend. And I'll check in again later with some more. So I feel like this quote from the title story, Who Do You Think You Are, really sums up the whole gist of the book. This was not the first time in her life Rose had been asked who she thought she was. In fact, the question had often struck her like a monotonous gong and she paid no attention to it. But she understood afterwards that Miss Hattie was not a statistic teacher. She had refrained from saying what she now said in front of the class and she was not vindictive. She was not taking revenge because she had not believed Rose had been proved wrong. The lesson she was trying to teach here was more important to her than any poem and one she truly believed Rose needed. It seemed that many other people believed she needed it too. Hi everyone. I just want to wrap up um, my buddy read of Alice Monroe's Who Do You Think You Are with the wonderful Tanya from the Sampler Girl channel. I will link her channel down below and her videos relating to this book down below as well. Uh, overall, it, we both really enjoyed this book. Uh, it is... There are a lot of themes, a lot of different threads that this story takes, and I would really encourage anyone to uh, who is interested in something that's really meaty and something you can really dig into to read this book. It's about, ultimately, a woman of a very specific time period and how her lack of access really defined who she was but it's also I think it's more than just about her being from that time period because I think I think there's many women who still struggle many people in general not just women anyone who still struggle with finding their identity and with finding an authentic identity that they feel they can really wear and that's what this this is book is is about identity. Um, in true Monroe form, it is a lot about relationships. But these relationships are very pretty specific to certain types. So there's the um, female female relationship of a stepdaughter and her stepmother. There is a um, mother daughter relationship which is a smaller, I would say that's a very small part of the book. And then there's a lot of um, male-female romance relationships and a small amount of female friendships. So there's other outside characters beyond Rose, her stepmother, and um, the lovers of her life and her daughter. But... I would say those relationships that I mentioned before are really the main focus of the book. Obviously, some of the stories I found more compelling than others. Um, my favorite stories were the ones where she was exploring relationships a bit more broadly than just with the men in her life, but I also felt a lot of personal connection to certain parts of her life that did have her revolving around men and using men to assert her identity um, because I think I also experienced that when I was younger so um, it was wonderful to buddy read this and um, yeah my second Monroe and I'll definitely be reading more in the future I'm also going to relate this to my 1970s project which is, um, if you are not familiar with that project, I will link the announcement video down below. But I chose 10 books to read over the next year, potentially, um, that were written in the 1970s because I seem to have a, um, 
I seem to enjoy literature that was written in the 1970s and I want to kind of delve deeper into different writers um, and see if that holds true for all of the um, books that I find interesting in that decade. And uh, so this was the 1978 book, I believe. It was published in 1978. So thanks a lot for watching this. Um, it was a great buddy read. It was a great uh, tick off my list of my 1970s project. And I will be back again soon with another video.